Hello and welcome to another book haul. Let me show you the books that I am keeping. The first one is this brand new copy of The Witch King by Martha Wells. This was up for the Nebula Award this year. I am surprised that it did not win. No, I have not read this yet. I just really like Martha Wells' Murderbot series and have every confidence that she would be able to write uh, a deft fantasy novel. So I'm excited to read this, even though it's not going to be a Nebula Award winner. I do still need to get the Nebula Award winner that won for this year, because I'm still doing my Nebula Award challenge. I'll probably be doing it forever unless I magically come across an insane amount of time with which to just read, which I will actually soon for the 4th of July I normally go camping. If you are new here, this is Moxie. She's my fur baby. She will be here, and you've already heard her screaming at me, so there's that. That was a wonderful gift from my wish list from Rob, as was this. This is Cassandra Clare, the sword catcher. Or sword catcher. I don't know why I keep adding the in front of things, but this is sword catcher. Uh, I do, if, if a note comes with it, and I know who sent it to me, I do try to keep it in with the book, so that way when I do get around to reading this, I can thank them properly, besides the thank you again, Rob, for gifting these from my wish list. Cassandra Clare is a, an author that I actually, an author, that I have almost all of her books. Uh, I actually have one of her trilogies tattooed on my arm. It is the Clockwork Angel. Uh, I really love that trilogy. She does write mostly YA. I think this is considered an adult novel. Super, super excited to get into this and to add it to my Cassandra Clare collection. And again, both of those were from Rob. So Rob, if you're watching this, thank you so much. It's incredibly generous for you to purchase those for me for my wish list and add them to my book collection, which continues to grow. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, I nobody sent a note with this one. This actually came directly from a Goodwill. I didn't know that they sold books on the goodwill.com website, but apparently they do. But this is a first edition. Uh, the Curse of Chalion by Lois McMaster Bejeweled. I reviewed Paladin of Souls, which I will link up above if you have not seen that review. I love that book, spoiler alert. And normally when, when I'm doing these Nebula Award challenges and I really love the books and I've never read the author before, I will go look them up and see what else is there. I did not realize it's actually the second book that she has in her Five Gods world and it's it's not, it's a standalone novel, but it follows the mother's journey that, and she's mentioned in this book, The Curse of Chalion, which is, this is the first book that she wrote in her Five God series. I was actually already gifted this by another one of y'all, but this is a first edition. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to keep both books. Uh, I'm keeping this one because it's a first edition, beautiful hardcover. And if you are the one that gave this to me, please let me know so I can thank you properly and also put the little tab in here. Um, but the one that was gifted to me previously actually matches the same height and size as the other books. Because hardcovers can come in two different sizes, so this is a what I would consider a full-size hardcover, and then you have what is typically like the YA hardcover. I don't think this was YA, but... The Curse of Chalion I now have in the full-size first edition hardcover like the true first edition and then I also have it in the smaller hardcover as well which I have all the other books so The Hallowed Hunt and also Paladin of Souls in the smaller version so I don't know if I'm going to be one of those people that keep all the versions or not. We'll find out but We'll see. So if you are someone who sent me The Curse of Chalion from the Goodwill directly to my P.O. Box, thank you. I appreciate you. I really do. It's beautiful and I'm so excited to read more from this world because I really loved Paladin of Souls. Not only am I a book collector as well as a book reader, although I've been doing more collecting than reading lately, I'm also a bookseller. Uh, I sell primarily at least on Whatnot, which is where all of these books are going to be available. I sell mostly genre fiction, uh, science fiction, horror, and fantasy. And as I mentioned, I have two whole crates here of stuff that's going to be up for sale. I am going to be going live at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday, June 18th. Again, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 4 p.m. Pacific. All the paperbacks will start at $2, and then the, all, the, all the hardcovers start at 3 So let me go ahead and show you what that will be. 
I have a hardcover of Earthrise by William Dietz. Hardcover of Jeffrey A. Carver's Eternity's End. Really pretty space scene there. I have a hardcover edition of The Ebony Tower by John Fowles, who is most well known for writing The Magus. And there he is in all of his glory there on the back. I think this is a book club edition. It is. It's a book club edition. But it's still a hardcover from a well-respected author. I also have a hardcover edition of The Tommy Knockers by Stephen King. This is a second print. It is not a first edition. However, if you want a first edition, I do have that available for sale on my eBay store because I actually ended up deciding not to keep it because I came across a second one. So that that's my book luck. It either it's either dry or it's super super prolific. This is a collaboration fantasy between three different female fantasy authors: uh, Melanie Ron, Jennifer Robertson, and Kate Elliott. This is the Golden Key. It is a thick boy, uh, but that is pretty much par for the course, at least for Melanie Ron and Kate Elliott. So. Definitely getting $3 worth of, I think, book out of this, in my opinion. I also have a first edition copy of Winter's Heart, which is the ninth book in the Wheel of Time series. There is that one. And then I got this because it, I thought the cover was ridiculous. This is <laughs> Cloud Castles by Michael Scott Rohan. And it is a man in an aviator jacket riding a white pegasus, which I find that hilarious. And I think this is the second book in the series. I'm not 100% sure, but there is that one. And if you are, have never been on Whatnot before, it is a live auction platform. And I will have a link down below, one to join if you would like to be a part of this auction or if I show anything that you're interested in. Um, but if you use my link and have never used the platform before, you will get $15 to use towards buying the books. It doesn't cover shipping. It's just for purchasing the actual items. But you know, with the hardcover starting at $3 and the paperbacks at $2, you could get a pretty nice collection of books and then only have to pay shipping. So I actually found some Doctor Who books as well as some Torchwood books, which is a spin-off of Doctor Who if you are not a giant nerd and did not know that. So I'm going to show you the Torchwood books. This is The Twilight Streets by Gary Russell. And these are what I would consider permabound hardcovers. So they never came with a dust jacket. They have the beautiful artwork like printed onto the book. I actually really like these personally. One, because I love hard, I obviously prefer hardcovers to paperbacks. One, because if I really love a book, I will reread it. Re, I will reread them. Uh, and then two, I don't feel like I'm gonna, I drop things a lot and I'm less likely to completely ruin a hardcover if I drop it than a soft cover. This is another Torchwood. This is another life. Got the up close and personal of the beautiful man himself. But these are all from the BBC Press, which I think is awesome. I've just decided I'm going to show you all the hardcovers first. So <laughs> this is uh, Doctor Who Touched by an Angel with the 11th Doctor there with Matt Smith, which I think I've only watched the one with Vincent Van Gogh, that one episode. Is it Van Gogh? Yeah, a Van Gogh. Sorry. And then another one for the 11th Doctor with Matt Smith. This is Paul Apollo 23. David Tennant will always be my Doctor. Although I did like the 9th Doctor, despite he only really did one season. The 9th Doctor is my introduction to Doctor Who. And then I watched most of the 10th Doctor's run. And then it got like to the point where I realized that they were probably going to kill him off soon. And then I just couldn't continue watching because I just didn't want to see that happen. And then I stopped watching Doctor Who because I was really attached to David Tennant. I'm still really attached to David Tennant. I think he's a lovely man. But there is that one. Those are actually 
pretty rare to find over here, at least where I live in the States, so I was really excited to find like a nice little stack of them. The Girl King by Mimi Yu. This is technically YA. Uh, I'm selling this one because it's the second copy I found. I actually kept the first one I found because, as I mentioned before, I prefer, prefer hardcovers and I also do read a lot of YA, uh, or I, I used to. I haven't been reading a whole lot of anything lately, which is a massive problem in my personal opinion, um, and those of you who actually enjoy my channel and my reviews may also feel the same way. But because I found a second copy, I figured I would share, so this is also going up for sale. It's fantasy, female protagonist, written by a person of color, so check, check, check. <laughs> I have a book club edition of Sphere by Michael Crichton, who is giving very much dad energy on the back cover there. But this is a book club edition. You can see it's got a little bit of a missing piece back there, but that's okay. I have a cat that you guys just saw, um, and I thought that this would be funny. I don't necessarily, it might have some like horror elements to it, but these are mostly like mystery thriller, short story collection with cats. <laughs> so it's perfect crime. And it's 15 short stories by a bunch of different authors. A lot of them are super well known. It's also edited and with an introduction by Isaac Asimov, so I thought it kind of fit. But it has John McDonald, who's most well known for his Travis McGee series. Uh, it also has Alan Kim Lang, Ellery Queen, Randall Garrett, Betty Wren White, Lieutenant Meade and Robert Eustace, Edward Hawke. William Britton, Dorothy Sayers, Clark Edward, Edgar Allan Poe, Bram Smoke Stoker, Wilbur Daniel Steele, and Jan Willem van die Vertig. Hopefully I didn't mess that up too bad. But I thought, considering it was edited by Isaac Asimov, it had to have at least had some literary merit. And then it has like two of the classic like horror, psychological horror thriller genre with Bram Stoker and Edgar Allan Poe. I figured there'd at least be some good stories in here. I also found a copy of Meg by Steve Alton and I thought it was funny because the, the back just says two words Jurassic Shark. thought that was hilarious so I definitely picked that up as well to sell. And then all of the rest of the hardcovers I have that are gonna be up for sale are all John Saul which is most well known for his horror. I have a copy of Shadows here. So Shadows, and this is in the shorter one. So, and the rest are all in the full size edition hardcover. Although this one doesn't say it's a book club edition. It just is a smaller hardcover edition, just to show you here. And then the next one, Perfect Nightmare by John Saul. Faces of Fear by John Saul. In the Dark of the Night by John Saul. You know what, I'm just gonna say, stop saying John Saul because that's literally what the rest of these hardcovers are. Black Creek Crossing. Black Lightning. And the homing. I find it very funny that these covers for all of these John Saul books are basically his name takes up half the front cover and then his face is all of the back cover. And the last hardcover is an omnibus. I've actually bought and sold this more than once. This is uh, a three book omnibus. Suffer the children, punish the sinners, and cry for the strangers. So there is that one, and yeah. <laughs> so that's all of the hardcovers I have, and now let me show you the paperbacks. I'm gonna start off super strong. <laughs> I could not believe I found this. This is a wild looking book. A Funeral for the Eyes of Fire by Michael Bishop with the most Nightmare Fuel cover at front and the back. 
It doesn't matter which way you're looking, he's looking back at you. It's, it's just the most unsettling cover. <laughs> and a nice yellow text block. A nice uh, Valentine paper back there. Got the nice, like, old book smell. Really nice. This is All the Wears of Pern by Anne McCaffrey. I will pick up any Pern book by Anne McCaffrey I find. So this is kind of like science fiction fantasy. It, there's there's a mild debate as to whether or not it's science fiction or fantasy. I always thought this was fantasy, but I do understand because of the genetic aspect of why there are dragons, why it could be considered science fiction. But I always viewed that as fantasy, personally. This is Isaac Asimov, Foundation's Edge, book four of the classic Foundation series. So I think this was written quite a bit later after the original Foundation series was published. A couple of Lois McMaster Bejeweled books because, yeah, I, I'm now a fan. A fan. This is Ethan of Athos, which is, I think, part of our Vorkos Sagan saga. I'm not 100% sure there. It might be one of the standalone ones from the Vorkos Sagan world. Then we have Cordelia's Honor, which I do know for a fact is part of the Forgus Sagan saga. So we got Cordelia there. This one won the Hugo Award. I have Trudy Canavan, the first book in the Age of Five series, The Priestess of White. Very nice copy here, like New Condition. This one is indefinitely not like New Condition, but I physically couldn't leave it behind because nostalgia. So this is Return of the Jedi, Star Wars, and this is a comic book of the third, or I should say the sixth movie in the Star Wars series. It is missing a corner here, but it is in full color. It's got like the credits for the main players in here and full color of the entire movie. I will say they did Han Solo a little dirty, like that's supposed to be Harrison Ford. All the other actors they got pretty well in the comic book, but Harrison Ford I don't know, it looks kind of like a mixture of Robert Redford and then like another actor that I can't think of off the top of my head. But he doesn't look like Harrison Ford. But I just couldn't let this go in the trash. I thought that this was super cool to find. It's from 1983. Obviously someone like really loved this or you know a kid got a hold of it and was oh my god I can't even show you this. That is a crazy looking Ewok to be sure. Anyway, I found this. I thought it was great. I definitely couldn't let that end up in the landfill, which is where a lot of these books would have ended up if I didn't get them. I like being the caretaker of books until I can get them into a new library, someone else's library, um, and keep them out of the landfill, which is where a lot of the books that I do sell would end up if I didn't get them. I have Terry Brooks, The Voyage of Ural Shannara, or Gerald Sh Shannara, I don't know. This is the second book in this series by them. Of course, Shannara is Terry Brooks's most well-known fantasy series. There's this one. I also have Nebula Award winner, The Moon and the Sun by Vonda McIntyre, and a nice paperback edition here. I do, of course, have this in hardcover, thanks to y'all, and I will eventually get to reading it. <laughs> Ooh, I have a couple of Michael Moorcocks. Uh, I did keep one, and I accidentally left that at the boys' house, so I will show that in a future haul, because uh, I was sorting things out, and I made sure to pull it out so I didn't accidentally end up putting it in this haul. Uh, as far as like putting it in the cell pile, but it, I think it's the first book of Quorum is what I found. But I also found these two. This is The Silver Warriors, which is the U.S. version of this book. I forgot what the original U.K. title was for this, but nice silver edition. This is like the second book in the series. 
And then same with this. This is The City and the Autumn Stars by Michael Moorcock in this Ace edition. And this is also, I think, the second book in whatever this series is. I can't remember off the top of my head because my brain is jello right now. And this is a first edition Ace. And I think this one is a first edition of whatever this is. This is a Berkeley first edition. Yeah. Hooray! So I've got some Michael Moorcock. I don't find him very often, so that was exciting. I also have another cat book, because I love cats. This is The Chronicles of Crestomancy, Volume 1. So this is a two-volume, technically a two-volume set, and it's two volume. They've, they've mashed the quatrology, quatrology into two volumes. Um, so this is Diana Wayne Jones. This is the first two books in the quatrology in one volume, and then I did not find the second. I've actually sold the full set before once, because I found it in New Classic Premium Mass Market of 1984 by George Orwell. Again, this is on my TBR of shame, because I still have not read that. I have The Mirror Prince by Violette Milan, or Violet Milan. I just made her name sound fancy. I just like the artwork on there. Really beautiful. I have a copy of The Dead Zone by Stephen King. One of his most well-known. Well, I mean, I think every, this is a first signet printing from 1980. A couple of Margaret Weiss books. The first volume in the Deathgate Cycle, Dragon Wing. I have the second book in the Dragons of Winter Night Chronicles by the Dragonlance Chronicles. This is the second volume. And King Sacrifice, Star of the Guardians, Volume 3. This is Her by Herself, which you don't find too often. Normally you just find the, the magic duo there. Uh, we have uh, Melanie Ron, the Mageborn Traitor. This is the Exiles Volume 2, and remember when I talked about the Golden Key hardcover? Again, typical for Kate Elliott and for Melanie Ron to just have the thick boys. Definitely, you're getting your, your value out of page count for sure there. All right, so we have a before the movie, but still technically a movie tie-in cover of Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. There is that one. And then a copy of Terminal Man, also by Michael Crichton. And then I got some trade paperbacks as well. This is technically YA. This is Eon by Allison Goodman. This is one half of, I think it's Eon and Iona, are two books in this series, but YA Fantasy. I have Merch Merchants, Merchant of Alice by Thomas Locke. This is the second book in the Legends of the Realm series. Really nice floppy trade here. I also, believe it or not, don't come across this book very often, even as a secondhand book seller of science fiction. Uh, Ready Player One. This is my first time finding this in the wild. But a more modern trade paperback copy of Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. And I have a copy of The Stranger by Albert Camus and this very minimalist trade paperback. This is winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature. Originally, Albert Camus uh, is a French author, so this was published in original French. I had to read this particular book when I was in college for a psychology class. And I enjoyed this. It's a, it's a very cerebral in more than one way a short read. So if you have not read The Stranger and you have like, well, I know not everybody reads at the same rate as I do. This took me like an hour and a half to read 
definitely worth it. I read, like I said, I read that a long time ago and I still remember almost all of it. That's pretty impactful considering I read that like 20 years ago. So, yeah. Uh, this is more historical romance than fantasy, but it is I Am the Chosen King, One Kingdom, Two Men, One Crown by Helen Hollick. Another trade paperback. And then this is really cool. I didn't realize when I picked it up. I thought it was just a trade paperback copy of The Dark Tower by Stephen King. But it is actually a vintage illustrated edition of The Gunslinger by Stephen King. And all of the illustrations are by Michael Wellen. I've talked about before how much I love Michael Wellen covers. I think they're absolutely beautiful. Like, I love his copy of, like, The Snow Queen and The Summer Queen. But here is The Gunslinger, part of the first book in the Dark Teller series by Stephen King, which is his fantasy series. This, I think, is from the 1980s. I don't remember the exact year. It's a first print from 1988. But it is illustrated. Oh, I probably shouldn't show that one on on YouTube's. That probably would make YouTube unhappy if I showed that one. Okay, here you can see this one. I think this is gorgeous. Not only does it have these full color illustrations, but at the beginning of every chapter it has like a little one as well. That's creepy. So I think, see, that's what I'm saying, at the beginning, they have these little tiny woodblock little prints as well. So I think that's amazing. I just showed you like over 50 books. Again, everything that you just saw except for the first three books I showed at the beginning are books that are going to be up for sale on Whatnot. Uh, I will put a link down below. You can use that link to sign up for Whatnot if you've never signed up before or just to get to my auction if you have. If you never signed up before, you will get $15 in credit if you do sign up and which you can use towards the purchase of the books. Again, this is a great way to support me if you like what I do here or, you know, you just watch this video, which is already a lot of support for me. I really appreciate everyone that watches these. Thank you so much. The more books I sell, the more free time I end up having so I can actually read some and do some more book reviews and not just the book hauls or the book collecting. But thank you guys so much for watching. I will hopefully see you Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 4 p.m. Pacific. Or I'll see you in the next video, whenever that is. Till then, bye! Bye.